Sean here, guys, and today we're talking about Shark Bite again. Now, this week, Mads Tech released a video with some latency numbers comparing DJI to analog to Shark Bite and basically broke the internet uh, with results that are showing the latency on Shark Bite is really a lot closer to DJI than we have thought and almost double the latency of analog. Very interesting. Now that's not how it actually feels to me, but let's put all that aside and talk about the issues of the SharkBite system. Now, if I wanna actually help the SharkBite system improve instead of just complain about it, one thing that I would do, um, and I have done for many companies before, is to make a top 10 issues list uh, per list that is in a prioritized order so that the development team can address those in order. So a lot of times when people are just complaining, 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 it's a lot of noise. We have to prioritize the issues for them, let them know what are the most significant so that they can fix them in that order. So let's get to it. Number one, the most critical issue for me personally is the need for four by three camera view. Now I have the Shark Byte system installed on this prototype Switchback HD. It fits in there nicely. Um, it's fairly lightweight compared to the DJI race quads that I've built. Uh, but one of the main issues is that it's still not, there's still 16 by nine only for this and even the HD zero camera that's about to come out. And so to me, more of an issue for racing than the latency of DJI is the 16 by nine only camera view. I put about 10 or 12 packs on track so far with SharkBite. I'm gonna do a lot more with this prototype this week. And not being able to see above or below you is so problematic for racing. A lot of elements that you have where you split S over or something. And uh, in the Houston area, we fly on tracks with trees. We fly at the night spot and concretes and car parks and not being able to see above and below you has resulted in a lot more crashing than I would have had had I actually been able to see. A lot of racers don't seem to be pointing that out and that leads me to believe they haven't actually spent a lot of time on tracks with this system. So that's the number one issue that you need to solve at least for people that are interested in racing is give us a four x three camera option. The status of this issue is still in progress. I believe they're working on it, Carl has said that. Number two, reliability needs to improve. Um, over the introduction of the Shark Bite system, people were having those expensive video transmitters die very, very quickly. Now, this status of this issue is in progress because the introduction of the two single layer boards failure rate does seem to be coming down. So we need to give credit where credit is due. Good job on that Shark Bite development team. We need to continue in the right direction and continue improving that reliability further. Um, the dual layer board seems to be the most problematic. So just keep note of that. Three, we need better size video transmit. 533 is one of the most innovative frame designers out there, but look at the frame that they had to design to in order to accommodate HD. Now this HD switchback can accommodate both the DJI system and the SharkBite system, but look how long they had to make it. And the reason for that is that racing video transmitter board that's 20 by 20, the mounting that racers prefer for to use is as long as a Thanksgiving banquet table. It reminds me of the table that they eat at in Harry Potter. Where there's like 50 kids sitting along it. I mean, I have a big family, guys, a big family, and I can invite everyone over and we could all sit around this video transmitter because that's how long and large it is. Supposedly, this system is best used for racing, but there's no racing quads that this system will fit into. You have to have a specialty design frame like that. So it's got to keep shrinking. At minimum, it needs to be the size of a 20 by 20 flight controller or a TBS 69 or a Ghost dual airboard it needs to be that size or smaller. So start shrinking them. Number four is better priced video transmitters. Now the Woot board does seem to be acceptable. It's 50 bucks. Now the long racing board we were just talking about is 90 bucks. Well, wait a second. What's the difference between those two? 
they both only do power outputs of 25 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. Neither one of them goes to 500. No existing uh, video transmitters on the system go to one watt or 800 or anything of that nature. So if it does the same power output, if it's roughly the same physical size, it's just a different shape, why does it cost almost two times more? No, unacceptable. The only way that SharkBite can ever be in any conversation is if it reduces the price point. Now let's talk about the price points briefly. Uh, premium um, analog setup is going to be about 80 to 85 dollars and that includes the camera the video transmitter and the antenna the equivalent dji setup is 160 bucks so shark bite needs to be right in that hundred ish 110 dollar range if it can manage to be a little bit more than analog but at least 50 to 60 dollars cheaper than dji then there's some justification there for some people to adopt it at that mid-range price point but the race board when you include a 50 dollar camera and a 20 dollar antenna now you're up at the price range of dji 160 bucks and people just can't justify why would you pay the same for a dji system when it doesn't perform nearly as good in almost any scenario so we need the price point to continue to go down and needs to be about the price of the whoop board. So I'm not saying slash the prices further. The whoop board pricing is acceptable. $50 for the video transmitter, $50 for the camera, 10 to $20 for the antenna. That's where the target is. So reduce that price, bring it in line with the price of the other units. Number five, we need better image quality, guys. The HD Zero camera that's about to come out, though, does seem to address this. So this is in progress. Hopefully, we'll be able to close this issue out very soon. So excellent job by that team over at Divi Math and HD Zero. Um, from all the DVR footage, I've seen the increase in image quality of this new camera that's about to drop addresses the majority of the issues. It brings the difference in image quality so much closer to DJI than it's ever been before that you know, we're almost going to be able to discard that. I don't know if the color handling is going to be quite as good, but it's in the realm of not being so far of a gap as it has before. So this is exciting in progress. Number six, better range and penetration. That's the worst shortcoming of Shark Bite is it can't penetrate. Um, it's like analog and DJI are at two ends of a spectrum. Analog can penetrate um, organic matter, trees, leaves, bushes, things like that. DJI can penetrate reflections, metal um, surfaces, roofs that are metal, like iron girders inside of a building, uh, warehouses. It eats that up for, for, <laughs> for breakfast. And both of those systems are weak at the other one's strength. SharpBite is weak at both of those and not just a little bit weaker, it's considerably weaker. Like DJI is bad at penetrating foliage, um, a lot worse than analog, but SharpBite is so much worse at it. It's like one tenth as good as DJI already is and DJI is already worse. So it's really, really, really bad. That needs to improve. If you need to give people higher output video transmitters, you know, get some 800 in there, get some 1000 in there. It needs to improve. That's hopefully in progress. Number seven, the DVR functionality of this thing is essentially broken, at least how it's described. It's supposed to work in the manual. Um, they did make an enhancement here that first it was only using a TS video format. It's a video format that no one's ever heard of before and it was terrible. Um, they have added MOV support on there, which is a much more widely accepted format, uh, which actually works okay. It does still drop some frames, but you know, uh, but the issue is if you have it on automatic recording, which is what racers are gonna wanna do, they're gonna wanna go up to the line, turn on their goggles, it starts recording, and so you always have DVR. Remember, in racing, you have to have that DVR to prove that you actually went those laps at that speed. If you do that, though, there's no stop button. You can't stop the recording. And so if you turn your goggles off before you get your quad and unplug it, the video file gets corrupted. And I had a whole outing where I flew this on Shark Bite the whole night long, and I only got one successful recording because all the other ones were corrupted. And I wasn't like, I wasn't following the directions. Okay, I didn't actually read them, but I used it in the same way that the HDO2 goggle DVR works. So this goggle works by going into automatic, pushing the button to stop, 
This one will not. The only way you can stop the DVR is if you wait till the race is over, go retrieve your quad, not to mention if you crash somewhere far or in a tree and you have to leave your goggles powered up, you have to leave this thing recording the entire time. Unplug your quad, wait five to 10 seconds till it senses the connection drop, then it will stop. Once you see the light in there turn from red to gray, then you can unplug. That's just, that's unacceptable. Notable though, if you do everything in manual mode, it will work, it will stop when you push stop. Um, but the difficulty is though, for racing, like you said, that means that racers now have to manage one more thing on the line. Um, and having them have to manage pushing their DVR record button while they're trying to prepare for hitting arm and start racing, that's problematic, you know. This is supposed to be a race-friendly system, that's not race-friendly. Number eight, we talked about this a little bit before, but higher output. We need 800 milliwatts, we need one watts. We need to be able to go farther and penetrate better, and the best way to do that is crank the power up, turn the volume to 11. The numbers all go to 11. Racing, we don't really need that. We're okay with, you know, short range penetration, but if you want anyone besides racers to even consider this, if I was going to a bando, why would I trust my quad to this? I would run either analog like Mr. Steel, or I'd run DJI like just about everyone else that I've seen. You know, it's interesting, I saw a uh, freestyle meetup by Bot Grinder this week that he posted on his channel, and I was shocked at seeing how many sets of DJI goggles. I thought freestyles were mostly still on analog. It seems like way a lot of them are on DJI and I, I can't blame them. You get such good penetration. Like bandos, I mean, of course, I would be wanting that DJI. Number nine, 20 by 20 single layer board. We talked about this a little bit, but it's too long. So they have completed and released this, but we're gonna have to put this completed option back up into the top 10 list because it's not small enough. So make it small. And last number 10, canvas mode. We have to give credit where credit is due. That was one of the main um, issues on the list and the DiviMath HD0 team has completed it. So as we can see, they are completing things. They are completing notable updates. They're constantly refining and making the system better. So I think that there's hope to being able to make it better. That's why I bought into the system. People are saying, you just bought this so that you could say that it sucks. Like, no, why would I waste my money and build up quads if I didn't think it was close to being ready? Um, but you know, like I want a system that's good and I can't say it's good if it's not good. I mean, it's getting there, guys, it's getting there. Now, in closing, I just wanted to say one last thing. You know, when I got into this hobby, I would have been all about helping to test this system, helping to make it better. Uh, before DJI came out, we would have been drooling over the system. Everybody would have been buying it. A lot of people would anyway. Um, but now that DJI is out, we're just a little bit spoiled some of us. Now, also me personally, with so much work going on in the channel, I'm just not willing to dedicate my own personal flight time to testing the system. So this is my contribution to make the top 10 list. Um, but just because I'm not willing to do that testing to help make it better doesn't mean a lot of you aren't. There are a lot of people out there that do love tweaking, that do love making things better, that do like a system that can operate more agilely than DJI. And these guys can really give you what you want, hopefully. So if you are that type of pilot, then SharkBuy absolutely is the um, system for you. You can work with the people that are developing it and refining it and making it better. You can give them your feedback. You can be like Ryan Quale, who is out there doing a tremendous amount of awesome work with the system. You can be like Titan FPV, Everything Micro, Duck FPV. These are a lot of channels that are putting out great shark bite tutorials. So check all those guys out. Um, thanks to all the those guys who have answered my questions and helped me get my system set up. So these resources are out there. And if you wanna be alongside them and help make the system better, give a true alternative to DJI, then yes, if you're willing to put that extra time in, it's a good system, it looks better, it's gonna keep improving. And I'm hoping that it does eclipse DJI. People are saying to me like, oh, you're a DJI fanboy. Like, I'm not a fanboy of anything. I just want something that works the best. So if this worked better than DJI for my purposes, I would switch all my quads tomorrow. I'm not married to any of these systems. I don't get paid by any of these companies. 
And even if I did, I couldn't hold back uh, from giving you guys the facts. What do you think in the comments, guys? What are your top issues with the system? What would you like to see improved first? Do you disagree with my prioritization of the issues? If so, let me know below. Thanks, guys.